Welcome to episode number 222, and in this episode I'm talking with Claire Blackie, all about aromatherapy and essential oils. We talk about choosing essential oils correctly, the do's and don'ts of essential oils, using essential oils in your home, office, in the car, and what essential oils are best for each dosha type. So please stay tuned. Welcome to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. I'm your host, Colette, and I hope to educate and empower you to take charge of your health and well-being, preventing disease in the body and mind so that you can thrive in life. I will be sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, which is the ancient healing tradition from India. Now, if you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend listening to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. And if you like the content, please be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so the new episodes will automatically download for you. Also, you may want to check out my private elements community, which is away from social media. It's a safe space for like-minded people to come together, to connect, to share, to support each other, and to continue the conversation from the podcast episodes. Check out the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and just click on the community tab and I hope to connect with you there. Thanks for listening and now here is a new episode. Hello and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. Today I'm happy to welcome Claire Blackie who lives in Nazing, Essex in the UK. She's a clinical aromatherapist and gained her diploma in aromatherapy and essential oil science with Neil's Yard Remedies in London. She offers aromatherapy massage, holistic facials, and pregnancy massage in Essex and at a yoga studio in Hertford. She creates bespoke blends and products and runs workshops in aromatherapy and natural skincare. Hi, Claire. It's great to have you on the podcast. Hello, Colette. Lovely to have you here, Claire, and I'm really happy to be having this discussion because the topic of aromatherapy and essential oils is a very popular request from the listeners. So I'm really looking forward to delving into all things aromatherapy and essential oils today. Good to hear. It's here. Great. So let's start, Claire, with what is aromatherapy and how can it help us? So aromatherapy is the use of essential oils, Mm -hmm. um, to bring about balance. So we're talking mind, body and spirit in the individual. It's actually been used for thousands, thousands of years as part of plant medicine. But modern aromatherapy really began in about the 1930s with a man called René Gatfuss from France. So aromatherapy is a holistic therapy. We treat the whole person. Um, So when someone comes to me for a consultation, we talk about lifestyle, you know, diet, what other therapies they're having, what medication they might be on. So we we look at everything. Um, It's not just one little part of them. So essential oils, these are the little magic bottles that we find. Mm -hmm. So they are highly concentrated essences of plants. So we use things like the flowers, the bark, the roots, the seeds, the leaves, fruit peel and the berries. So for instance, when you're peeling an orange, from the peel, you might get a bit of um, oil or spray coming out and you can st- you smell that really potent, obvious um, orange smell. And that is essential oil coming out of the peel. Mm. So, um, for instance, they use different methods to get essential oils out of the products. So for fruit, they use extraction. So they literally press it and they s- extract the essential oil that way. For flowers, they use steam distillation. Um, And they can also use um, solvents to extract them. So say like you scar by jasmine absolute. When it says absolute, they use a solvent to extract it. So they also use a modern way of extracting essential oils is by using CO2. Mm -hmm. So that's um, so you can get ginger CO2 and it will smell much, much more realistic than um, ginger steam distilled. So there's different ways that they extract them. And then once you get the essential oil, it's very, very, very potent. So um, it, um, you don't need very much to use it. 
That's it. So less is more with essential oils. And with that essential oil, each one has about like a hundred different chemical components within it. So by looking at the chemical profile, so essential is all about chemistry as well. For any chemistry people out there, it's very exciting for them. You can tell what that oil will help with by looking at the chemical profile of it. Mm. Okay. And then just going back to what you said about aromatherapy, that you look at a person's life when you have somebody coming for aromatherapy, that you look at everything in their life. And then do you you tailor what treatment or what oils you use given their specific conditions? Absolutely. Yeah, during the consultation, we work out what's what's going on, what support they need. Sometimes it's one aspect of the life, sometimes it's multiple. So we work out the most important. And normally I'll blend about three different oils for that person for that day. Um, it could, um, yeah, we'll make sure that they like the blend as well. Mm-hmm. So say like they've got a sleep issue, I won't just blend a nice oil for them to help them sleep. Find out what else is going on in their life. Is the job stressful? Is the diet affecting it? You know, what else is going on? So it's it's part of the discussion as well. So they get lovely treatment. And normally I will give them a product to go home with as well. So like the oil's left over, I'll take give it to them in a little rollable to take home so they can continue the treatment afterwards. And next time they come back, maybe it's the same issue, maybe it's different. And well, I do a new blend each time they come. Mm, that's lovely. Okay. And so what are the main uses of essential oils? So we have, well, from the chemical components, so sometimes these, they could have anti-inflammatory properties, antibacterial, analgesic, antidepressant. There's different factors. So essentials mainly get used for stress, tension, anxiety, depression. You could use them to alleviate um, coughs and colds, headaches. Maybe you want a bit of renewed energy. You need a boost. So some of them are very um, energizing and uplifting. Maybe with aches and pains, they're good at soothing soreness, skin mm. problems, sleep issues, maybe hormonal imbalances you're, you're struggling with, maybe you've got hot flashes. So there's lots of essential oils to help with those symptoms and, and digestive issues as well. Oh, okay. Very good. And so what format can you use them in? You mentioned the different types of oils and how they're extracted differently. But so you can use them in different formats as well, right? Like diffuser in in oil for massage. Yeah. So once you've, you know, think about the, the issue you'd like to work on. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's um, sore muscles, maybe it's stress, maybe it's sleep. Then try and find the right oils to support you and then decide how to apply it. So if you have a sleep issue, diffusion. So they're the, you can get an electric diffusers to plug in. Um, each one's different. So just read the instructions of that model. Um, you could get the little oil burners. You put the little candle under. So that's helping to diffuse the oil. You can also do inhalation. Mm, like a steam. Literally, steam inhalation or literally just putting it on a bit of cotton, cotton wool oh. pad or tissue. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'll work something, too. <laughs> uh, something as simple as that. Uh-huh. Um, we do have inhalers that I create for people. They look, I don't remember, did you have, did you, when you were younger, did you have the VIX inhalers? Yes, yes. You, you inhale it under your nose so I can create them with um, okay. essential oils in. Okay, um, and what's the base that's in that? No, in the in the little inhalers, it's just a cotton wool pad in there with the essential oh. oil blend. Oh, okay, great. Okay. And so I guess I'd like to start talking now, Claire, about how can we use it in the home when we're kind of going down that road already talking about a diffuser? I have a diffuser here. I love it. It's, you know, I can put on different settings and depending on how I'm feeling every day, choose a different oil, but I love to have it going in the background. And as well, it puts moisture in the air too, which is great. Yeah. 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 Humidify the air. So mm-hmm. typically you want to be using, if you're an adult with no health issues, six to 12 drops. Okay. And you, only need to diffuse for 30 to 30 minutes to an hour oh okay and <laughs> this is good normally to know. that's a bit of a shock to people they're like yeah. i can't diffuse all day you could do very low level diffusion all day so i'm talking one two drops you don't need 12 drops like continue like and adding them throughout the day 
So right. those oils will have their effects on your body. And then you don't need to overload the body. Right. You can also put your diffuser on without any essential oils in if you want the humidifying effect or you light the atmospheric mm. up. So, and if there's children in the house, we drop it back right down. So literally just two drops in there. All right. So it's if, if there's children around two drops and or six to 12 drops and how much water roughly? Oh, it depends. It depends on the diffuser. OK, that's you need to read true. the instructions and right. keep them clean as well. So you wipe them clean with just a bottom wall bud or tissue. Mm-hmm. You don't need chemicals in there. If yeah. you let them don't let stagnant water sit in there, because then mm-hmm. when you diffuse it, you're diffusing stagnant water. All right. So fill a fresh daily. Yeah, give it a nice wipe down. And then you said 30 minutes to an hour. To an hour. Okay. Per and day. You should all, uh, yeah, so Selic did that in the morning. You could then do it again in the evening. But just okay. to get across the idea that once those oils have been, you know, put into the room, they will have that effect on you. And if you keep doing that throughout the day, you will just overload your system. So Maybe in the morning you want some lovely uplifting oils to help mm. you crack on with your work. And then in the evening you you do a new set. You do okay. want some wind down calming mm. oils. Very good. I tend to leave mine going for a couple of hours. So good to know. So I wonder how, I wonder how many drops you're using throughout right. the day. Well, mine is like 500 milliliters of water. So it's quite a big one. And I use seven drops and then it, I have it on a, you know, it's going like every 30 seconds for maybe two hours. Oh, okay, so you're doing intermittent, so that probably works out. But it probably works out the same way. Okay, okay, good. But that's really good to know. I actually never heard that before. Okay, so diffusing is great. Yeah, mm-hmm. inhaling on a tissue, or you can make your own personal inhaler. We also make rollables. I don't. You live, depends what people call them. Pulse point pens. Rollables. I love those. I love those so, for traveling. I always have those when I'm traveling. I love them. You can put them in your pocket during the day if you like, you know, out and about. I have them under my pillow if I wake up at night. Mm. And it is a um, a carrier oil in there and with your essential oils in. You you literally need six drops of essential oils in there and it's 10 mils. So you'll okay. see some recipes online. It's really important that you get your information about how to do this from the right sources. You'll see online people putting like 30 drops of essential oils in them. Mm. And it's, it's not needed. It's too high. Okay. So I want to, I have a question about the inhaler. Do you, are you just putting the straight drops on, on the tissue or on the cotton ball? You can buy blank ones. um, And it comes with a cotton ball stick in it Mm. and you need maximum 15 drops. Okay. Bear in Um, mind, this is for a, you know, an adult with no health issues. If you have health issues, you're pregnant, you're a child, you've got, you know, lots of medication, you've got asthma, diabetes, in there that you you must, you must get, you know, advice from a professional aromatherapist. Right. And for yes. anyone, it's really nice to be able to get the right blend. Yes. So yeah, 15 drops is the maximum I'd use in that, and that can last up to six months. Okay. Okay, great. Oh, yes, that's what I want to ask about too. So once you open a bottle of essential oil, how long is it good for so we store essential oils in um, ideally the fridge, actually, to stop oh. them oxidizing. But you want to keep them in a cool, dark place. Mm-hmm. They are mm-hmm. in an amber bottle or a blue bottle for a reason. So we mm. don't you don't want to be pop- popping them on your sunny window sill. Right. When you open a bottle, you use it and put the lid straight back on. So air oxidizes it. Mm-hmm. Your citrus oils will last about one year. They oxidize very easily. Things like lavender, your, you know, your more your your middle notes, they're going to last about three, four years. Okay. Your heavy oils, your sandalwoods, your patchouli's better, but they can last up to eight years plus, which is another reason why you don't need to go out and buy a hundred essential oils yes. because you probably won't ever use them before they've all gone off. Right. Yeah. Cause they do last a long time. And so I'd love to cover that now is how do we choose essential oils? Cause there's so many on the market and how do we know that we're getting, you know, good quality essential oils? Yeah, it's it's a really good point. First off, I wouldn't buy from Amazon. Okay. Um, so you need to make sure the bottle that you're buying has the right botanical name. Mm. You might say to me, I don't know what the botanical name is, 
you can always use the internet for that. Say um, you just want to buy some lavender. There's mel- there's many types of lavender. In fact, the calming mm. lavender is lavandula angustifolia. So when you buy your product, make sure it has that name on it because there's a lot of synthetic mm. bottles of essential oil out there or they blended it in a carrier oil already. So you're actually um, only buying about three so shots of essential oil. Right. So it's already very much diluted. Yes. Okay. So, so make sure you're not buying anything synthetic and then um, make sure you buy from a company that you can read their credentials. You know, right. so say like they care about the ethics. So some essential oils come from unsustainable sources. Mm. So you need to make sure you're buying from a company that, you know, so for instance, frankincense is um, under threat in certain countries. So we make sure we don't buy from those countries. Um, okay. So Neil Jard Remedies, they're their brand of essentials I use, and they get their frankincense from Amman, and it's part of a big sustainable project where they're mm. reinvesting. There's a big nursery there. They're working with the university. Fantastic. So you know, you need to read the company. You know, as, Credentials, Great. really. Is it organic? Yes. <laughs> so they- that's essentially what you're looking for. You're looking for the botanical name and organic and conscious brands who are giving back to yeah. to the farmers who are producing these these yeah. products. Maybe you've got a maybe you've got a um a distillery near you. So for instance, in the UK, there's some lovely lavender fields here. So mm-hmm. near me in Hitchin, you can go, there's lavender fields and they produce their own essential oil lavender. Beautiful. Love, this is the best way to buy your essential oils. Yeah, it is. Go I with- have a local distillery here just outside Nice. I think you're familiar with it too. Oh yeah, like- Floriana. Yes, Floriana. And they have the most lovely oils and facial products, which I use too, made from organic essential oils and they're right from the region. So yeah, it's, I really appreciate that, having that local. Yeah, that's that's, and you know, you can see where it's where it's come from. Exactly. When you buy the essential oils, think about what what you want them to do for you. Mm. So don't go and buy an essential oil because oh, orange that sounds nice. Think mm. about what what it is you want to be doing. We will talk later about the right oils for different doshas, but mm-hmm. whatever it is, you know, if you want sleep, well then let's you know focus on buying a couple of oils that are good for sleep, and then think about. Find out what oils might blend well with them. So you're much better off having like five or six essential oils mm. than than hundreds that you never use. Think about what you want it to do for you. Okay. And then when you when you have them, we don't use them neat on the skin mm. either. Yeah. We always yeah. Um, blend them with a carrier oil. So a okay. nice a nice um, amount to use is about four to six drops of essential oil with each tablespoon. With each so that, tablespoon of carrier oil. Yeah. Okay. So that might be grapeseed, coconut, sweet almond. Um, okay. And you can use that on the body as a body oil, a massage oil, and you can even put that in the bath. When we say don't use it neat on the body, it's because it's, they're very strong, you know, mm. they can really sensitize the, the body, the skin, they can get reactions. And over time, if you keep using neat essential oil on you, you can... Um, end up not being able to use that oil ever again it mm. will cause a reaction every time it's called sensitization wow so when you're in the mm. bath as well oil and water don't mix so don't hop in the bath and then chuck in your essential oils on mm. top because mm-hmm. they will sit on top and they can cause irritation to the body mm. so we we blend it maybe um a carrier oil again uh you can use you can get plain base or um products like a cr- Neil Jardin do a range called the Create, and it's a plain hair and body wash. Mm. So you can blend your own. You can get lots oh. of base products. That's suitable. So what's not suitable is whole milk, honey, vodka, or bath salts. If you want to create bath salts, we put it at the carrier oil first, then in the bath salts, then it goes in. Right, but you still want the okay, the carrier oil. I got you first, and then the bath. Some sauce people put their essentials directly on this on the bath salts, but it's not, um, you know, but they've got some Epsom salts. They yeah, you need to put it on the carrier oil. Bath. Gotcha. Okay, okay, and the carrier oil. Then you have to be very aware of the type of carrier oil you're using, of course. Too the same thing. Is it best to use like a, a cold pressed carrier cold, oil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. the only thing out of the kitchen that i'd be pulling is the raw coconut oil <laughs> right 
Right. But otherwise, you want to be making sure it's properly cold pressed, grapes mm. and sweet almond oil, whatever is um, suitable. Yeah, because right. they you're still getting lovely therapeutic properties from the base oil. Yes. And I guess with the coconut oil, then you have to melt it right before you add the essential oil. Yeah. I hope you're enjoying learning all about aromatherapy and essential oils with Claire. And along with these great additions to help pacify the doshas, we know that we need that foundational structure of daily self-care practices, Dinacharya, in order to maintain optimal health and vitality. And I wanted to let you know that I have a group Daily Habits for a Holistic Health program starting February 21st. This is a 28-day online program, and we're going to go through it in a group format so we can support each other and hold each other accountable as we learn about the circadian rhythms and how to structure our day to live in tune with the circadian rhythms. And I'll help you put little triggers in place in order to make these daily self-care practices very simple so that they're eventually on autopilot. We'll also learn about the mental gunas and how to pacify the mind. We'll talk about the foundations of Ayurvedic healing so that you can become your own healer. And we also talk about tuning into your intuition so that you're connecting with your true nature and that you can bring that into the world and live a fulfilling and thriving life. So if you're interested in joining the group Daily Habits for Holistic Health program, please click on the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and just go to the events tab. This episode is sponsored by Kerala Ayurveda Academy. Would you like to deep dive into the elements, doshas, seasonal guidelines and other Ayurvedic principles? Kerala Ayurveda Academy offers online and in-person training to guide you in your wellness journey and help you support others to align with nature and their true self. Now is the best time to join the spring programs and receive early bird tuition savings. To learn more, visit keralaayurveda.us slash courses and you'll also find that link in the show notes. All right. Now we got a little sidetracked and we were talking about using essential oils in our home. So I want to go back there because we we started talking about the diffuser and then we went, we got sidetracked. So let's go back to using them in the home. And you were talking about, um, you know, putting it on a cotton balls and inhaler. And I've heard that's good to kind of put in maybe in your pillowcase as well. Yes. And if you're, you can do this with children as well. You want to make sure they don't see you. <laughs> <laughs> But often I'll put one drop of lavender um, on a cotton wool pad and put it in their pillowcase. Oh, so if funny. you don't want to put it um, for an adult as well, you don't want to put it directly on the pillowcase because it, it's an oil it can stain. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, ball. you can put it, you could use them in the roller balls that we've talked about on your, on your pulse points. You can put a diffuser in your bedroom. People have diffusers in every single room. <laughs> <laughs> I um the ones in the chill my children are four and five so they have little diffusers I trust them now and they they glow lightly they change yeah. colors and it's very uh-huh. soothing for them oh that's lovely yeah yeah um and then other ways we can use it in the home um you can make your own massage oils up right so using the um carrier oil so say like you've got a digestive issue you might want to make yourself up a little um, massage oil and rub it on the, the tummy. Mm. So, you know, you, you've got to think about why the best method to use your essential oils. You don't okay. want to be, I don't know, if you've got aching muscles, diffusion is not going to help you. Yes, you need to get that in. <laughs> Apart from making muscle. you mentally feel a lot better, you need to be using it on a, a massage oil on the legs or in the, you know, create a nice bath product for yourself. Mm -hmm. digestive issues you could diffuse some oils to help stimulate digestion you could massage it into your tummy and you could have it on a little bit of cotton wool pad okay okay very nice great yeah i think so when we uh, inhale the essential oils it goes up the nose into the limbic system of the brain Mm -hmm. and this um part of the brain is what deals with emotions behaviors sense of smell long-term memory which is why when we smell essential oils, it can really trigger, you know, yeah. um, long-term memories. Oh, oh, that reminds me of someone. That reminds me of a place. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So when we inhale them, they can um, they go into the bloodstream and they can have an effect. So say like you inhale lavender, it's got com- compounds in it called linalol, and that helps to regulate dopamine in our system and that you know can reduce anxiety. So that's how it's working. And when we massage it into our skin, again, it's getting into our bloodstream. Mm. That's how it's that's how it's working. Yeah, it is amazing how smell can bring you right back to a time and place. It's fascinating. So what I like to do now is talk about the do's and don'ts of essential oils, because we do see people using them sometimes in not the best way and that they could be harmful. Uh, So let's talk about that. Yeah, so first of all, they might know, yeah, we've talked about the botanical name. They might be using synthetic products, which might be exacerbating the problem, mm. you know, because um, synthetics can be irritants. Mm-hmm. So buy the right product, make sure that they haven't gone off. So, you know, don't pick up an oil 20 years later and expect it to be good. You know, you s- smell it and look after your oils. Don't use more than you need. So check the dilutions. Mm. Um, don't use a neat on the skin. Don't ingest the essential yeah. oils. Let's talk about so, that. Because <laughs> you do see some recommendations for ingesting oils. Yeah, so there is a type of qualification. I've got a very high level of qualification for aromatherapy mm. on clinical level. Um, there is, I'm not, I'm not qualified to prescribe essential oils internally. So you have to go on to another higher level. It's basically like you need a medical degree as well as being a aromatherapist. And in the UK, I don't know any of them. So in France, it's more common. Mm. And in America, I think you might find some. So when, when you find that person and they might prescribe essential oils internally, they would never tell you to put some couple of drops in some water and drink it. Okay. So <laughs> because yeah. that's, is causing irritation down your um, esophagus and in the stomach. Mm. You might not feel that immediately, but over time that can lead to stomach ulcers and all sorts. When it's prescribed internally, they would put it into a carrier oil and make it into a capsule, Mm. which diluted. And you would take it for, you know, like three capsules a day for a week and Mm. then you stop. Okay. If it's appropriate, so, you know, if it's a digestive issue, maybe that's what they think would be the best option. Mm, mm. So you often see people, you know, people on the internet saying, just put drops in your, you know, your lemon drops in the water every single day. And you, so first off, what, what do you think, what do you think you're achieving? Can Mm. you achieve it in a different way? Can you not just use, fresh lemon juice squeezed yeah can you use herbal medicine in a different way there's herbal teas um you just need to check the source of your information Mm. so and in america they have products i think there's about three products you can actually buy over the counter things like um there's a calm product um which has been clinically tested um, you know, uh, and it's been passed, um, and it's essential oils in a capsule to help sleep. But oh, okay. on again, on it, it's not. It's not. <laughs> they're not just raw essential oils. They're in capsules, and it's a prescribed setting. You know, it'd be like right. take this for a certain amount of time. Right. Okay. So, yes, not adding lemon just to your water instead of a fresh, real lemon from nature just for convenience sake is is not a good idea. These oils are fat soluble. And yeah. uh, and they need to be administered in the right in the right setting from a professional. Yeah, right? under the guidance of a, a professional. Yeah. yeah, and the fact that I don't know anyone of that level in the UK is probably quite telling. Yeah, in France, a lot of the medical doctors have also got um, aromatherapy qualifications, so ingestion is a bit more popular there. But again, it's done in the right way. Very good. So, any other do's and don'ts that you want to cover? Yeah, just if you have any issues, so if you're young, you're elderly, asthma, diabetes, cancer, you know, if you're on a lot of medication, you must, you know, get get advice from a professional. I say get advice from a professional anyway if you're interested in essential oils and want to get some ideas. I'm a member of something called the IFPA, International Federation of Professional Therapists. 
you can go online and you can find someone local to you. It is global. You can find a, a registered therapist and you know that they're going to be high quality and with all the right um, qualifications. In America as well, there's NAHA, uh, National Association of Holistic Home Therapists. You'd be able to find um, someone through them as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, just think about what, how you're getting your information. There's mm-hmm. no, really lovely books out there. And when you buy um, Neil Jard Essential Oils, and I'm sure many other brands, you get a lovely leaflet in it saying, right, this is how to use it mm. with nice dilutions. Right, right. Yeah, and as conscious consumers, choosing, as I mentioned earlier, brands that are giving back and be very conscious about how they source their raw materials and that they're, you know, that there is sustainable farming going on, fairly traded and so on. So I think it's worth really, you know, investing in companies like that and buying those products because that's essentially where we want to vote with our money. You know, we want to support these, these companies who are going the extra step to make sure that the, their practices are sustainable. Yeah. So if you ever find things like sandalwood or frankincense and they're very, very cheap, yeah. It's a massive warning sign because these are endangered species. Mm. You've got to make sure it's from a sustainable source. They've got lots of new plantations in Australia to help keep the supply going. So just check. Check what you're buying. Check what's mm. in the bottle. Yeah. Check it smells what it's meant to smell like. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's organic. Yeah. Because yeah. Okay. it has the maximum therapeutic benefits as well. Okay. Very good. So let's move on to what type of oils you recommend for each dosha type? So let's start with kapha dosha, which can be very grounded, but when aggravated can become a little bit more uh, sluggish, feel like you're moving through mud, feel like their mind's a little foggy. What essential oils are good for energizing kapha? So you want the really strong one. Well, some of the stronger smelling ones as well. Eucalyptus Mm. is a very invigorating powerful scent you know mm. eucalyptus moves mucus in our body as well and it um if you pop it on in the morning it gets you going mm. and it clears the head mm-hmm. and if, if you want to you know um have clear thinking eucalyptus is, is the best that's one um, of my favorites to use in the morning when i'm working that's perfect yeah. Then you want things like ginger as well. Ginger really stimulates the metabolism. It, it's warming. It gets you going. Then you've got grapefruit. This is very invigorating and uplifting and clears the head and makes you motivated. Um, so a lot of the citrus ones, so mm-hmm. orange, lemon, grapefruit. Then things like rosemary, these are really powerful oils. So very stimulating, very uplifting, very strong scent. So with some of these oils, actually, um, there's some, so you wouldn't use rosemary if you had high blood pressure. Because mm. it's so stimulating. Yeah. Um, but it blends beautifully and it's good for sore muscles as well. Thyme, thyme is very stimulating and it helps to move the mucus and Time is what we use as well for long-term recovery. Say like you've been ill for a long time. This helps to rebuild the body and mind to get going. You mm. can also use things like cinnamon. That's very warming and you know, boosts the metabolism. What else is there? Juniper. It's a diuretic. So a lot mm. of these help to move the lymph. Orange as well. That's what we, and grapefruit, we use this to move lymph around the body. Um, bergamot uplifting Mm. basil um, and lavender okay so and i guess of course the time of day in regards to circadian rhythms that have an effect so if you think of kapha time 6 to 10 a.m and this is the time when you know we're more focused on our work this is a great time to use those oils when you were talking earlier about maybe having different oils throughout the day these energizing oils in the morning time when you're having that productive time in the morning will be perfect yeah maybe you want to get on with the workout maybe you need to get moving and Mm. i don't know get working then these are the ones you can put them in your diffuser mm-hmm. you can put them on um the cotton wool pads and have it next to you and inhale it 
Mm. You could pop, pop, pop it into a personal inhaler as well. Or the rollers. Or the rollers. Or yeah. you can make yourself a little body oil, have a morning shower and then um, use them in a body oil. And so with the rollers, we didn't actually talk about that. You're putting them on the pulse points. Pulse points, yeah, which okay. are your wrists and your temples. What's also nice is to rub it just in the um, palms of your hands and just mm. then cup them and do three deep inhales. Okay, lovely. Great. Thank you for that. Okay, so let's move on to Pitta. We know Pitta is that very productive, transforming energy, really can, can get a little intense um, when aggravated, can be overanalyzing, overachieving, overly competitive. So let's talk about some oils that could be cooling for Pitta. I, I know this one the best because I'm very Pitta. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the most cooling essential oils we have is peppermint mm. so um i know we've only spoken about essential oils today but part of aromatherapy is also hydrosols um hydrosols is when you when through steam d- distillation what comes out at the end is essential oil but also a floral water which is the hydrosol and in fact many distillers distill for the hydrosol essential oils kind of that's the byproduct um so peppermint floral water is lovely sprayed on the face okay so yeah so your hydrosols you just use on the skin yeah okay okay great they're really safe for children as well so another cooling one would be chamomile chamomile is very anti-inflammatory and cooling Mm. so you could spray that um on the face very good. And so the peppermint is cooling, but it will be a little energizing too, right? Yes, but yes. not that. But also, it's a funny one because you can actually feel quite calm from it as well. Okay. You, I wouldn't necessarily use it at night. So, say that you've got yes. a headache, peppermint is really nice. It's, it's analgesic and it's mm. cooling. So okay. You get a lot of calm relief from it. Okay. So, analgesic is pain relieving. Yes. Okay. So we've got other oils like bergamot. Bergamot's really good for calming anger mm, and tantrums and fever as well. So if you had a fever, you can make a cooling compress. So get a cloth, um, a flannel sink, and um, get some cool water and put a couple of drops in and zhuzh it in. Mm. And then um, squeeze the flannel out and put it on the forehead nice so that would be very nice and cooling so yeah i use bergamot a lot around the children as well if they're getting one of my children's quite pitter <laughs> <laughs> so it helps to calm children down before bedtime as well oh perfect okay great and we've got cedar wood as well it's very grounding and cooling mm. um fennel is good for any sort of um fever, inflammation, jasmine mm. as well is what we use for anger mm. and irritation. I used that daily when I was having to homeschool. Oh, <laughs> where's my jasmine? <laughs> <laughs> well, great. That's, I'm glad you had those tools available. <laughs> yes, that's, um, I made a lovely jasmine blend and that's what saved me. Um, lavender is very anti-inflammatory as well lemon is cooling lemon grass is cooling lemon grass is quite powerful though so if you use it on the skin like we use tiny 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 amounts because it's so um potent mm. you could in, you could put it to fuse with them and um, rose is really good for anger and irritation as well yeah, I love and rose. sandalwood um vetiver is mm. lovely grounding and cooling as well mm. Mm. um and then for pitters they want a light cooling base oil so that's why coconut oil's good yeah that's that's another good point so for the the base oils for pitta coconut being cooling um and then for kapha we want something that's not cooling because kapha is cool cool by nature so what would you suggest there something a bit more neutral probably a sunflower yeah yeah that's the one exactly what do you tell your clients to use with their kapha yeah i recommend sunflower oil for kapha dosha something Mm -hmm. something nice light and neutral so for pity on the cooling one so coconut oil is nice so that's why hydrosol is really nice for the pitters spray on the face cooling Um, roller balls are really nice because they're obviously out and about 
you know, doing 400 things at the same time. So <laughs> that's why rollerballs popped in the pocket can really help. You know, when, like I suggested, you roll it in your hands, the palms of your hands and take three deep breaths. Sometimes that's, you know, that's the little shift that you need to be like, oh, hang on a minute. I've just been going a bit crazy then. Like, right. let's take it down a step, do some deep breaths and we can carry on. Okay. Baths are nice for pitters as well, but obviously not too hot. Mm. Um, and massage as well. Um, right. Looking for a nice treatment with someone. Yes, exactly. A therapist. Mm-hmm. And so talking about doing a lot of things at once and multitasking, let's move on to Vata. So <laughs> as we know, Vata, very creative, very spontaneous, very excited but when aggravated can become mind spinning and overwhelm and just too many things going on at once. So how do we ground Vata with essential oils? Um, so the most grounding oils are the, the tree oils. So that's what we like to think. The tree's got lovely deep rooted, you know, think about the roots going into the, the ground. So things like um, sandalwood are really good for them. Um, myrrh, mm. frankincense, um, all these sorts of oils. They are very calming and soothing and balancing. Um, sandalwood is one of the heavy, heaviest oils that we have. It's very thick even trying to get it out the bottle. I sometimes think that if you've ch- you, if sandalwood is the right oil for you, equally patchouli as well, myrrh, sometimes it, you have to be patient even getting it out the bottle. Sometimes it's a, it's a test, like that's what you need. You'll see the Vata person frantically <laughs> shaking the bottle. Why isn't it out? You're like, no, you have to chill. You have to wait for that oil so to come that out. thick in the bottle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a test in itself. Yes. When I, when I do lots of workshops, you can see them. You're like, you're just going to have to hold it and wait. What? <gasps> oh, right. Okay. And then, you know, it's part of it. Uh-huh. Um, what else is good? Clary Sage um, oh, yeah. is what we use for balancing emotions. Um, mm. And it's good for anxiety and the feelings of fear. Bergamot as well features for anxiety. Um, the frankincense is grounding and soothing, but also it helps to calm the breath. So this is one of our go-tos for meditation. Mm. So it's very really good at helping us keep some focus, um, but calm. Geranium as well is what we use for balancing emotions. Ginger. So I think Vata people, you want something quite sweet. Mm. So um, ginger is one of our sweeter oils as well. So that's warming and sweet. Jasmine as well, the self-esteem. Lavender features, um, lavender is pretty tridoshic, so it's good mm-hmm. for the insomnia, it's good for the anxiety, it's for the fear. Lots of people that come to me, that's what they have. They have the anxiety and the fear that they're out of, out of balance. Um, yeah, we spoke about myrrh, so myrrh's grounding, very heavy and thick. Um, so frankincense and myrrh, they tap the tree and you get the resin that's why it's also important about how to obtain it. So um, where it's unsustainable, it's been overtapped. So you tap it and then come back two weeks later and the resin has, um, the sap has seeped from the wood, from the bark. Mm. They, they collect that and they steam to seal the resin. Uh-huh. So that's how it's come from the tree. The roly is lovely as well for insomnia and anxiety. Patchouli, um, ground, very grounding, rose. Oh, and ylang ylang. It's very heavy and sweet. Um, mm. And that's good for self esteem. So okay. you could pick any of these oils that we've suggested. You'd want to pick two or three and try and blend them together. Mm-hmm. And there are, you know, lots of ways to, to blend successfully different methods. Um, one of them is just literally to hold three of them together under your nose and see if it smells nice together. And, mm. um, so you can, yeah, focus on those. It's quite a few in each section then that we've mentioned. Right. And, and so, so you'd have different amounts of each, depending on what your needs are and what your personal preference is. Yeah. So say like you want um, to make a little bath oil for 
vata so we've got a tablespoon of what would we like here we'd probably you want a sesame, sesame. oil mm-hmm. or something like um avocado might be nice it's very mm-hmm. rich and warming mm. you'd want you listen for about four to six drops so say like you want to put some patchouli in patchouli is very you don't need much basically it's very mm. strong so you'd like one drop of patchouli you could have two drops of the frankincense and two drops of the bergamot or something mm. Per tablespoon. Yeah. Blend two or three together. Yeah, lovely. And then as we talked about timings, we know that Vata is high between 2 and 6 a.m. and 2 and 6 p.m. So if you find that you're getting a little agitated, you find your nervous system is overactivated during that time, this is a wonderful time to use those oils or during the night, obviously having it, you know, on a cotton ball and under your your pillow. um, a nice thing to do for nighttime for Vata's is to make it into a balm or thick um, body balm or body cream and you'd rub it into your chest and your feet to so mm-hmm. do something very grounding before going to sleep. Um, right. Yeah, massage into the feet, the chest, sometimes the lower back. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, and that really helps. Yeah, foot ground. massage or or doing a, a massage at night for vata is very grounding. And when you say a balm, you're using a thicker, a thicker uh, substance than just the oil. So what? Yeah, what do you? A balm would be oil with a wax blended okay. together. You can buy these. There's lots of gorgeous um, aromatherapy companies out there. Or I'm. It's the sort of thing I make for my clients as well. I'd make them a bespoke balm. Mm. Um, so it's beeswax wax. in mm. yeah you can mix them with beeswax if you want to be vegan there's candelia wax there's quite a few different waxes but yes beeswax comes from bees or you could use a very thick body lotion and create your own that way there are lots of base products out there so you don't want to say like you have a bath product that's i don't know Radox is a big brand here. You don't want to add essential oils to that product because it's already got its scent, it's got its preservatives, and it works as a system. So you don't want to be adding things to it. You need to make sure you find a nice plain base. Mm. For Neil Shard, have a plain bath oil, a plain lotion, plain ointment, plain hair and body wash. And there's lots of companies, I'm sure, in all the different countries around the world that you can find these base products. And on them, they'll They'll give you tips of how many drops to add. But my suggestion to keep safe is four to six drops per tablespoon. Okay. Okay, great. Good. Really good information there. And, you know, we we talked about using the oils at home and obviously you can use them in your office. Uh, You have to be conscious if you're sharing an office with others as to what oils you're using or using them in the car. I've heard of putting like the, the, the oil on a cotton ball and putting it in your your vent. Yeah, and you can actually get car-specific diffusers. Okay. Yeah. Keep so you if calm. you're in the office, if you are in an office, then you that's where rollerballs come in. Yes. Or yeah. the little in the personal inhalers. Right, right. So you're not, yeah, you're not diffusing it and affecting others as well. Yeah. 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 So you, there okay. are companies that create those products already. So maybe, you know, you've, your cafe, maybe you've listened to a few good essential oils here you can buy pre-made ones or mm-hmm. you can if you you know experienced and confident and have a go at making your own or find an aromatherapist and they can help blend one for you i do okay. lots of workshops where i teach people how to blend and to make rollables nice. it's really good fun i normally have themed workshops so maybe it's aromatherapy for sleep for anxiety for menopause um so then we'll choose about four different essential oils and uh, I'll send them a sample. So these are online or in person. We get to experience about three or four, about four essential oils. And then I teach them how to make a product using those essential oils. Great. That sounds lovely. So as we finish up here, Claire, I'd love for you to tell people where they can find out more about you and these workshops and your other offerings. Um, so my website's com. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. So both of that is Claire Black Aromatherapy. And uh, I'm in Nazing, which is Essex based. I'm right on the Hertfordshire border. Great. And that's Claire with an I. 
And I will put that link in the show notes so people can get in touch with you if they're in the area or interested in your online workshops. Lovely. Or if they're even close, come for lovely treatment. Yes, absolutely. So you have a couple of locations where you do treatments. Yes, in Nazing itself and then in Hartford. I'm in a lovely yoga studio there. Perfect. Great. Well, Claire, this is very insightful. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we finish up? Oh, I think we covered anything. If people have questions, you know, then I'm happy to answer them. I can't answer specific um, but general questions about aromatherapy. I'm very happy to answer. Great. And you'll find that link uh, to get in touch with Claire in the show notes also. Claire, thank you so much. This is really insightful, really enjoyed it, learned lots. And I appreciate you taking the time to educate us today on aromatherapy and essential oils. No problem. Nice to speak to you, Colette. All right. Take good care of yourself. Thanks again. Bye. 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 I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Claire and please check out the link to her website in the show notes. Also, if you think that this episode will be helpful to family or friends, please share it with them. And don't forget that I have that group Daily Habits for Holistic Health program, online program coming up. February 21st, we'll go through it together as a group and really support each other in installing a new operating system that keeps us balanced and thriving in life. If you haven't already done so, please follow or subscribe to the podcast and the new episodes will automatically download for you. And if you would like to rate or review the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Be well and bye for now. Slonga full.